Well, thanks, Kara. Um, so today's topic, we're going to talk about all integrating or tracing requirements from uh, Rational Doors to Rational Rhapsody, and two of the methods for doing that, two of the uh, tools that IBM provides for uh, doing that. Uh, briefly, we're going to start off with an integration for Rhapsody and Doors, just in case you aren't familiar with them, although I would guess if you're on this webinar, you probably are. Uh, and then we'll go into uh, gateway specifically on how to set up a project, uh, how to do a little customization uh, of the gateway project, how to trace requirements, uh, some of the caveats about it. Uh, do the similar thing for a rational design manager, a Rhapsody design manager. Discuss the pros and cons and I'll give you a suggestion or two on which one you might want to use. Uh, and then I'll take your questions. Uh, so to start off with uh, Rhapsody Indoors Integration Overview. Um, again, for those of you that don't know, uh, Rhapsody is an extremely powerful UML and SysML modeling tool. Um, it does a lot of things in addition to that as well. You can simulate your models to make sure your logic is correct and that your uh, assumptions and, and diagrams are doing what you expect them to do. Um, you can generate production-ready code from it if you so choose. You can, again, do a variety of different things. In this context, it's, we're going to talk about it in uh, the context of requirements, and specifically it gets used in two ways in that uh, field. One is to help clarify or analyze and break down existing requirements. Uh, diagrams, of, uh, activity diagram, for example, might help you understand a particular functional requirement. And then, of course, it's also critical uh, for effective software and systems modeling. And uh, the related to today, basically, you have to be able to trace your requirements into your design to prove that you're actually uh, accomplishing what the requirements require you to do, that you've covered them all. Uh, rational doors. A heavy hitter in uh, requirements management uh, tools. Uh, it, it, well, it manages requirements very, very well, but its real power is in its extensive linking capability and the traceability analysis. Uh, you know, the thing that differentiates, one of the many things that differentiates stores from, say, Microsoft Word for requirements management is that traceability capability, the, the able to follow the links, report on the links, and, and so forth. And specifically today, we're going to talk about uh, how to link requirements and doors into models inside of Rational Rhapsody. Now, the two solutions we're going to talk about today, again, Rational Rhapsody Gateway, which is an add-on to the Rhapsody product, uh, connects requirements to, um, well, excuse me, Rhapsody model elements to the requirements sources, doors being one of those possible sources. It also works with Word and Excel, and as we'll see, there's actually several other predefined things that it will work with, you can customize it to uh, go to really any requirement source that you need to. The second is Rhapsody Design Manager, which is a relatively new product. It's been out for a few years, and I think it's at version 4 right now. Uh, Design Manager, a jazz-based product, um, it links requirements in doors directly to model elements inside of Rhapsody. Uh, there is no synchronization required. It's a live link, so if I see a requirement in my Rhapsody model, I hover over it or click on it, I'm looking at the live requirement in, uh, in doors. Uh, that's not true with Gateway. Gateway is a periodic synchronization that you have to run to keep everything up to date. Okay, let's start with Gateway. Um, again, a mechanism to provide the linking between requirements and Rhapsody uh, design model uh, elements. To do that, there's a couple things that have to happen. Um, you have to identify the type of analysis, in other words, the way to identify a requirement in whatever source you're going to. We're going to focus on doors today, and uh, it comes with four different types of analysis methods there, So, and you can define your own, of course. We're going to take one of them, and it's illustrative of how it works really for all of them. 